Welcome to Seeking Truth with David Martell. Always be seeking a question to everything. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the first episode of Seeking Truth with David Martell. I am going to do a first episode. Figured that uh, the topic I could cover would be perseverance. I was trying to think of an episode that could give you some information, a little bit of information about who I am, uh, maybe where I've come from or what I've gone through, uh, but tie that into a principle that is very applicable in my life and uh, an important part of living in the solution for me. Um, and perseverance was what came to mind. So um, all I'm really going to do is just talk through a few examples that I've experienced in my life that perseverance was was the you know practical application that got me to a place a result you know that had I not experienced I probably wouldn't have the freedom I have today in my life so um just a short you know very short version of what I experienced before becoming an adult um came from a broken home my parents are great they had a hard time when I was really young, um, but turned out to being great people, great parents. Um, that separation, you know, like anyone else, as many other people have experienced, comes with difficulties. But in, as a teenager, uh, I struggled with um, addiction. I struggled with behaviors that created this big gap really between who I felt I was inside and who I continued to behave as and and that you know the actions I was taking really just kept increasing that gap and making it bigger and bigger as I got older and th that distance as that distance grew I think that I started to experience this part of me that I felt like didn't I didn't really exist maybe like there wasn't this good person inside of me anymore Perhaps there wasn't this hopeful person, right, or a caring person, and and so my perception of life was flawed. It was damaged. It was, um, you know, it was it was negative. Um, I really didn't think that there was another option for me that I could somehow live a life that you know, could be identified or interpreted as being successful, whatever that may be, right? Like it just, any measurement of success just did not seem feasible for me at the time. And so um, I got in some trouble. Uh, I was probably, well, I was 18 years old when it happened. And uh, my way of dealing with that um, was to admit to myself, you know, that I've got a problem that is, you know, bigger than anything I could handle. Um, and, and so when I accepted the fact that I likely was struggling with addiction, um, there was help that was provided. You know, it took me a long time to embrace that and to have real interest in that, probably about a two year journey. Um, but one of the things that I heard in that, during that time, that two years, I was kind of like going back and forth. I was always like really unsure about whether or not, you know, getting clean is something that, that could work for me. Um, or if it was something that just would be again, impossible, like up to this point in my life, I really hadn't accomplished anything successfully. Right. So I had no past or previous record that helped me understand that this is possible for Dave, right? Like it just, it, it didn't seem possible, but I kept hearing people talk about the same issues, the same problem of addiction, and I could relate to that. It's like, man, that guy really gets what I am struggling with, right? He's been where I've been. But at the same time, they would share about a change in their life. They would, you know, talk about something different being possible. And so it was probably one of the first times in my life that I started to experience a little bit of hope. Um, around this same time, I remember listening to some, you know, one of the real estate tycoon guys. I was 20 years old 
And um, I remember listening to his cassette tape and he's like, he's saying, you know, if you want to be a millionaire, you got to surround yourself with millionaires. You got to surround yourself with the people that millionaires surround themselves with, like the right lawyer and the right accountant and blah, blah, blah. You got to network with these people. And, you know, it's not at all like I was, I wasn't anywhere near that image, but what I did get from it was who I surround myself with today is who I will be tomorrow. And I remember just taking this small inventory of who is in my life today and thinking, you know, this is not who I want to be tomorrow, you know, and, and having, it was like one of the first awakenings, you know, one of the first ones that I can re recall or recognize that was quite significant for me. And, you know, my time is spent with these people, right? The same thought processes are shared and recycled over and over again. And so like, if you want something new in your life, you really, you've got to do something you've never done. This doing the same thing with the same people will always get you the same results. It's insanity to think otherwise. So I made a decision. I'm going to start to change the people that I'm surrounding myself with. And naturally, the discussions you have change. The thoughts you have change. And so this change started impacting who I was and what I started caring about. And that gap and that that distance between who I felt I was inside and, and who I was being, that distance that I identified started to decrease quite dramatically. Um, it started changing very, very quickly. And, um, you know, and I think about like how I was so hopeless and got to a point in a place where not only did I get hope that I could actually become a person who's just clean and sober, right? I got hope that like I could actually achieve and do some successful things in my life. So, you know, that was the first time where there was a transformation that started happening for me. And I think when you, when you reflect on perseverance, there was a two year window that I mentioned where there was just tremendous uncertainty. There was this massive battle between who I have been like I was busy being this a certain way and, and there was this completely different person deep down inside. I knew he was there, but I had no experience or I, I, there was nothing I could place a bookmark on to say like, ah, yeah, there's the time when I was like living as who I truly believe I am and who I desire to be. It didn't exist, Right. So for two years, I had to stay committed to taking action, okay? And, and, and this is addiction I'm speaking of specifically, right? So like this, you know, it, it was quite the monster. But during that window, there are many times that I relapsed. There are many times that some would have looked at me and said, oh, he, he can't even stay clean or he failed, right? And so... Having a journey that looks so imperfect, extraordinarily unpleasant, continuously faced with evidence I could easily use to say that I'm failing or this isn't working, I kept making a choice that maybe this is possible. There is definitely a level of desperation that existed. And But what I'll point out later is that desperation isn't necessary. Something that's even more powerful than that is inspiration. At least that's what it's been like for me. In this particular experience, desperation was the catalyst. And that desperation was the fuel that allowed me to continue to take the, these actions, right? So as I surrounded myself with people who had a healthier thought process, a healthier lifestyle. I was able to identify very specific actions that I could take and that I could commit to on a regular basis. And that I, you know, and I was told, and I believe to some extent that if I continue to do this, this other battle that could be viewed as failure would get better. 
And, and so I did that. I took that journey. I committed to those actions. I did the work, right? And sure enough, it got to a point where, you know, the last time I ever used anything was in um, March 31st, 2001, right? So, you know, and that journey continues for me to this day, right? But a very different journey than it was in the beginning. And so from that point on, you know, there was some freedom that was experienced. And prior to that, I never could imagine a life where, you know, I'd have freedom from addiction. Like, I just didn't think that it was something that was really possible, but, you know, and, and I remember, um, I can't remember if I was driving or if I was on the bus at the time, but I just, I just ha remember having this thought process and thinking like, you know, I can't remember the last time that I had a thought that consumed my mind on getting high, right? Like I, I couldn't quite place my finger on when that time was because I was finally free from it. That was the bigger realization because prior to that, I was waking up every morning and that was the first thing on my agenda. It was the first thing that I could think of, the only thing that mattered and the only thing that I was concentrated on. And so when I was able to, through desperation, to replace that desperation of getting high with getting clean and finding a different way to do life, it yielded a result, right? A logical person would say, of course, that makes sense. You know, but that same principle that I learned, I carried forward and applied it in so many other areas of my life. And it's applicable in so many ways. It's the same work. I persevered through the doubt, through the feelings of failure, through the insecurity, the judgment that I experienced from other people. I just continued to go forward no matter what. No matter what, right? Um, after that, I went through school. Well, first of all, I had a lot of other jobs as well. Um, I even had a job, like my first business was uh, printing, or I was acting as a broker, as a printer, making signs, uh, different printing products, whatever. But I was really just going out and getting clients and then finding somebody to make the stuff for me. Um, so I was like, I'm 21 years old. I'm kind of trying to get some education completed. And... Um, and I'm trying to learn a little bit about business, right? And and I did good. I mean, I don't know how I pulled some of this stuff off. I, uh, you know, I, I stayed committed to action. So I remember thinking like, I'm just going to go knock on some doors and I'm going to go get some business. Like, I don't have any clients, but I'm going to go find some. And, um, and so I decided I'm going to go and knock on like the head office of Samsung and Microsoft and, and, you know, I didn't have any experience that told me like, this is going to work. <laughs> I didn't have, you know, I was just, I was just uh, probably a little naive, but I desired to do something successfully. Right. What I do remember though, is, is before walking in, I remember thinking like, this is what I'm supposed to do. Like if I'm going to be a salesperson, I have to walk through this door and then I've got to ask them to do business somehow or find the person that makes those decisions. But I hadn't done this before, right? So like I listened to some tape or read some book and I thought, all right, I'm going to do this. Or some of the people I surrounded myself with were doing it. And so it's like, all right, I can do that. But I remember sitting outside of that door of one of these companies and just being absolutely terrified. Like what if I walk in there and they reject me? Because that I have experience in my bank account that tells me like, that's very possible, right? That is a logical outcome. And I had to fight through that thought process, right? The opposite of perseverance is just giving up or it's giving in to the thoughts and the fears that we experience, right? Or the, these defeating belief systems. And so what was being activated in my mind was this belief system that told me that I'm going to fail. And despite the thought and the belief, and I mean, it was a belief. I made a conscious decision. I, was, I made this effort. I had to commit to taking action. I'm going to physically walk myself into this building. And I'm going to ask 
who the right person is to speak to about providing them with some solutions for printing and their signage <laughs> and, and just physically do it. Forget what I'm thinking and forget what I'm feeling because most of the time what I'm feeling and what I'm thinking is bullshit. And so I have to stay committed to the action. I did business with the companies I mentioned and a couple other big brands. I did business with all of them. It was great. In fact, I, you know, one of those companies, they had people coming from uh, South Korea in like two weeks, coincidentally, and, you know, these executives, and they needed to replace all the signages outside in front of the building. They needed to do a full, you know, remodeling facelift of, of their building. And they didn't have anyone to do anything last minute. <laughs> so, um, I didn't really, you know, again, my experience was limited. Like I just said, yes, I will do it for you. It will probably cost extra because it's last minute, but I will do it. I didn't have a solution, right? I just had to go and find a company that was willing to do a last minute and share those profits with them. But we pulled it off, right? And, um, you know, and again, it was an outcome that I didn't think was possible. And the biggest thing that I had to fight was a belief that was telling me that I'm probably going to get rejected or that I'm probably not good enough, right? And regardless of that, I still had to commit to the action and move forward no matter what, right? So I think that my, um, you know, it, it continued to develop. It continued to evolve for me. And there are times in the last 20 years where I had challenges that were either mental or they were emotional. And no matter how intense it was mentally or emotionally, the solution was still the same. So other than just committing to an action of moving forward, whatever it is that I can identify is a physical action for whatever the scenario is. The other thing that I had to commit to goes back to the simple principle of like, whatever I feed myself with is what I get, right? And so I, you know, initially identified that as who I surround myself with is who I will be tomorrow. But that translated into feeding myself, right? And, and so I, became more conscious about the material and the books that I read. I started to uh, try to look for documentaries that maybe could challenge the way that I viewed the world or the way that I thought about things. Um, I started a mastermind group quite early in my, in my business career. And, and in our mastermind group, you know, we were a group of, entrepreneurs who would study literature together, we would commit to doing work, we would set goals together. Um, but I found tools and things that I could feed myself with. My original programming was just negative. It told me I wasn't enough. Right? I wasn't going to be enough to make whatever I could define as success be possible. So I started in the business that I'm in today um, as a financial planner. And when I initially started that business, it was under the premise that I would be a full commission advisor. So I can only eat what I kill. And I went through some changes in my life at the very, very beginning that were ultimately were probably... Um, yeah, I would say it's one of the most difficult times in my life. Um, I went through a divorce. It was my first divorce. And uh, we had a you know one-year-old at the time, and uh, who's now 15. And the way that that happened was such a shock to me, right? It was so unexpected. And I, it, it brought up pain and feelings in me that I hadn't really ever felt probably since I was like 10 years or younger. Um, you know, I have a friend that told me, you know, he said, look, 
divorces, they bring out the best in people and they bring out the worst in people. You know, so at some times I might be at my best, but other times I might be at my worst. And I saw that. I was definitely at my worst at times. But one of the things that it did for me is, is that it really affected the way that I could work successfully in this brand new business. I was like a couple months in, full commission. I remember sitting by the phone and just staring at this thing, not able to pick it up, right? I, like I was frozen in pain and in fear. So when I talk about pain that I hadn't felt since I was 10 years or younger, there was this pain inside of me that I think I was just running from my whole life and I was trying to bury with, with the drugs. And, and now this event occurred and it just cracked it all open and I was a disaster. And every insecurity or fear or discomfort that existed in me because of this message that maybe I'm not enough came to life. And that dominated my entire life for probably three to six months at least. And so it g gave me a really bad start to the business. It was a really slow start. I remember having this amazing plan and, um, you know, I, before disaster hit and I had this plan, I was going to complete this plan and everything's going to be successful. And I was gonna make a lot of money. I was going to be free and, you know, everything's going to be good. And I remember showing this to my business partner at the time, uh, another advisor, and, and he was like, great, you got a good plan. It's measurable. You got time attached to that. You got outcomes, everything. Great. Now just expect that nothing goes according to plan. And I remember thinking like, what the fuck, dude? Like, what are you talking about? Like, that's not what I want to hear right now. I can tell you who is right. Like nothing went according to plan. Getting a divorce was never part of the plan. And I was not able to pull the trigger on a sale for a long time. Right. I don't know if the stats are true, but for me, I had to get, I started off, I was selling group benefits and I had to make a thousand phone calls to get a hundred people to even just answer the phone and to speak to a hundred people that maybe I can get an appointment. I would get maybe 10 appointments out of those hundred. And out of those 10 appointments, I would maybe close one. Right. So it took a long time to build anything. I accumulated a lot of debt. I was, again, I had this one year old that we had 50 50 custody of. And um, most of the time, I didn't really know how I was going to pay rent or how I was going to get groceries. And so a number of times I would sit there and I would think, like, I think this is when people quit. Like, like at what point? Am I going to say this hasn't worked and now I've got to go get another job, right? Like, like at what point is it responsible to say this does, this isn't working out, right? I can tell you, I never got to that point, but I asked myself that question many times, many times. I had beliefs yelling at me. My beliefs would tell me, you absolutely have to quit. This isn't going to work, right? And I was terrified to share the details of what was really happening with some of the closest people in my life because the rational thinking would be that you got to stop what you're doing. And so I was really careful about who I'd share this with, right? Going back to the people who I surround myself with is who I will be tomorrow or what I feed myself with determines how I grow. Also referred to the people that I share with and that I'm vulnerable with has an impact on the energy that I get from that conversation, from that relationship, and then how I move forward with that, right? There's a lot of value. And so I have to be really careful you know, there's some people I know for sure, I and mean, we can identify them in our lives. Like I tell them what's going on. Immediate response is like, yeah, get the hell out. What the fuck are you doing? Shut it down. But I just could not give up. You know, so by this point, I mentioned inspiration earlier, 
right? As opposed to desperation. There, there was no desperation because getting another job was easy, a no-brainer. I can go get another job. I can get a decent income, a decent salary. I'm a good salesperson, right? No problem. But I surrounded myself with the right people, right? That mastermind group that I had. I read literature that I could consider food for myself. I did work, affirmations, journaling, right? I did everything I could think of to fuel inspiration about a future that was worth fighting for. And one of the things that's most important to me is that I am moving towards a life that I can, where I can identify that the future is greater than the past. The only way that I can have a say in my future is by taking full responsibility in my present. And there was a very conscious decision about that battle. I could have just taken a job. Most people probably wouldn't have judged me. They would have probably said like, okay, there's a smart man. Now that thing wasn't working out. You know, he's doing something that's reasonable. I wasn't okay with reasonable. You know, after many years now of therapy, I can agree and accept that the childhood I experienced has a lot to do with me wanting to live a life that is actually more unreasonable than reasonable. And uh, I don't judge that anymore. I just accept it. That is, that's just what I'm interested in. And, um, and so I continued on this path of inspiration. But the thoughts were constant. The battle was, it was, it never ended, right? Every day, all day, the beliefs and the thoughts that told me this was unreasonable. They told me this is not sustainable. They told me that I'm being irresponsible as a father, right? As just human being, a taxpaying human being. And so I had to push through all of that, no matter how intense that battle was and that pushback was in my brain. And I'm no scientist, but I did learn enough about the neuroscience of my childhood or the impact that the child, my childhood had on me. I learned enough to know how the beliefs have an impact on my brain. Um, you know, Bruce Lipton is, is one of the guys of the biology of belief, um, that, you know, I, I remember studying that and, and finding ways to practically apply that in my life. Affirmations were a good tool. I basically saw myself at war with my broken self. And, you know, and, and, and I think that there was a huge leap with inspiration and that war, when I started to see it more as this is just part of the pain that exists within me. And that I started to actually believe, not just hope for things being possible, but I believed things were possible. So what I'm describing is, is that uh, with enough time and enough work and, and feeding myself with enough of the right ingredients, Desperation turned into inspiration. The perception of this war or this battlefield in my mind turned into more of acceptance and healing. What I thought and hoped for became a belief. That was only possible because I remained committed with this action. And I'm talking like at least five years. 
for that specific event and that specific challenge in my career and those thoughts to start clearing out. In fact, in five years, my business became sustainable. And I remember having, you know, I was tracking everything, like my growth year over year. Um, you know, I was averaging like 30% growth every year. I was doing really, really well. But when I finally got to the point where I was making enough money to pay for my life expenses, you know, it was about the five year mark. And my, I remember, and I knew my numbers extraordinarily well, right? And I'm, I'm driving to the office one morning. And I have this thought that just randomly occurs that says, yeah, this, uh, this business ain't success. It's just not sustainable. Like, what are you doing, Dave? It's not sustainable. And it was the first time that I had the reaction, like I kind of giggled at it. I smirked. I was like, I was like, well, isn't that crazy? Like that thought just occurred. It still happens. Right. And with all of that work to stay committed and to keep pushing forward and to experience like real results in my life from poverty to abundance, measure in you know external measurable ways, right? It's not just external, but I'm talking about measurable external outcomes. And, um, and still, my fears, the insecurities will still try to convince me that it's not real. And that's really, really important. It was really important for me to remember because it was just never the same again. And so, you know, it, it, it got easier. It got even more challenging. Like, it, you know, I, I kind of turned it into a game. And so now, um, you know, perseverance for me is a little more fun. It's more pleasant. Um, I can still have the negative thoughts. They can still occur. I don't necessarily feel that I am subject or imprisoned by them, though. I just simply just observing them is something that occurs. And once in a while, I have to remind myself like, oh, that's like a perception of scarcity as opposed to abundance. Easy. Okay, no problem. Done. You know, and that's the result of all of the hard work and all of the actions I had to take. Um, and so today, the way that I do the, that, I, you know, I do this work is, is that like, let's take New Year's Eve as an example. I don't, you know, for many, many years now, I don't, I stopped partying on New Year's Eve. I don't remember how long it's been. It's been over a decade um, easily. But what's really important for me is that I treat New Year's Eve. Uh, so my wife and I do this together now that we're married. But we look, we take a review of what last year was. And and we just take an, an inventory of that. We We take responsibility for our present. We look at the goals we had set out the things that we succeeded at, the things maybe we didn't get to, to do or that we forgot about, maybe we didn't do a good job of managing. But more importantly, we look at forward and we think about, well, what is, what is it about life that we desire that we just don't have or that we're not doing? And why? Right? Like, why aren't we living the best life we desire? What's holding us back? And, and our planning is focused and based on implementing those actions for that coming year. We review a five-year plan, a 10-year plan, a 20-year plan, and so on. And we have long-term vision together, right? And so, but it starts with taking responsibility for the present. And I talked about this inner pain and having acceptance with as part of who that is for me. And, um, I think that that's an important part to go back to because I can have responsibility for my present when I can have responsibility for my pain and any behaviors or any thoughts that are really associated to that. It's not an excuse. And it's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about it's just an experience that I have. And sometimes it can get in the way. Sometimes it speaks loudly to me. And sometimes it's extraordinarily uncomfortable with my emotions. But I can have acceptance with it. It's like, yeah, that, that's a part of me. Yeah, that's, uh, that's seven-year-old Dave. Sometimes he gets a little fucked up or he gets freaked out. 
No problem. It's okay. We got him. He's good. And that became the relationship that I started having with myself. Significantly different than thinking that nothing was possible. Significantly dif different than judging myself for having negative thoughts or being afraid. You know, I used to have, I used to judge myself because I didn't have enough belief, right? And so, because the pain was so great. So I was surrounded myself with the right people. I was able to find the right food to feed myself with and be really disciplined at taking action and to continuously feed myself with that, whether it's literature, writing, praying, meditating, physical fitness, dieting, um, this, you know, studying philosophy, religion, history, whatever. I had to continuously feed myself and invest in the person that I felt I was so far away from. The more that I did that, the more that gap closed. And today, I'm not really far off. That gap, if any, is extraordinarily small. There are many days in my life today when I am reflecting and I'm really grateful and content because I can identify that I am living in line with that person inside. I never thought that was ever going to be possible. And based on where I came from, like based on the journey that I had, knowing that the change occurred because I took action and persevered through that action, no matter how uncomfortable it was, no matter how scary it was, it really helped me believe that this is possible for anybody. And so I believe it's possible for anyone listening. And I hope that you can grab something from this and maybe apply it for your life. But I hope that, you know, you guys can drop some questions or comments. I'd love to have some feedback about this or start that conversation with you. Thank you for listening.